El compás de Siguiría has something very special, right? I don't know, I love it. It's like a trance, it's like a perpetual motion. But uh, when it comes to explaining it or counting it, it can be very, very challenging. So let's do some cleaning together. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillem for Flamenco Map. Welcome to my channel. And today we keep exploring the amazing, fascinating Compas de Seguiria. In the previous video, we said that Seguiria Compas is not five beats, but five accents. And it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five. This is the way I count it. Me and the majority of flamenco musicians, I think, and dancers. But this is not the way I explain it. Because I think, at least at the beginning, it's much easier to understand and visualize the 12 beats compass. So we have many different ways, and let's take a look at them and stay till the end. Maybe I tell you which one is the best. First option, we think Lego. And I make more videos about compass with the Lego because Legos are just a very, very incredible, amazing tool. People count like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And it would be something like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. No, putting the accent on the first bit of each Lego. This is an option. Another option is with the same Lego to count like this, putting the accent on the last beat of each Lego. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, etc. So what? The advantage of this, it's very visual. We understand how the compass is built, like three times two beats and two times three beats. That's very useful. But this way of counting, it's too many one and too many twos and too many threes and one two one two one two one two three one two three and we don't know where we are actually in the compass it doesn't give a global view of the compass okay with the lego second way to understand and explain this compass with 12 bits is the flamenco clock i'm sure you already know this right let's have a look so we have our good old flamenco clock with the good old accent on 3, 6, 8, 10 and 12. Same as Solea, Alegria, 12 bits Pulia, etc. The difference with the Solea compass and this one is that for this one we start counting from the 8. Our first bit of the compass, the Seguirilla, is the 8 on the clock and the last is the 6. 8, 10, 12, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here we can easily see the correspondence here with the five accent count, right? So the advantage is that we only have one 12 bit cycle for everything, just one clock with the same accent at the same place all the time on the beat. 3, 6, 8, 10, and 12. We'll find different compasses starting on different beats, but the clock and the accent, the place of the accent will remain the same. One disadvantage, it's a bit weird uh, to start a compass on 8, right? Why? It's just because 8, it's 8, it's not 1, it doesn't feel like a beginning maybe. This is why uh, people use the same clock, but they just change the place of the accent to make this cycle start on the one of the clock, this way. We have the same pattern, the same cycle, just the numbers change. Advantage, we start on one, so it feels better, right? But the disadvantage is that other accents land on numbers we are really not used to stress, like five or 11. And I think this is due to repeating over and over the Solea compass or Alegria, this kind of 12 beat compass with the famous 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8. And it can feel very weird for us to stress on 5 and 11. I don't know, at least it is my feeling. Anyway, I think the 12 bits count is much more accurate, especially when you begin with this crazy compact. There is another way to count this, and it's kind of an hybrid version between the 5 accent count and the 12 bits count. It sounds like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and, and 4 and, and 5 and 1. So we have the 5 accent count and we also sing the 12 beats. I don't really like the and and all the time. You know, 1 and 2 and 3 and, and 4 and, and 5. I don't know, it doesn't feel really musical for me. But anyway, it exists, so it's good to know. But if we remove the and, we have our five accent count and this one is very nice because it makes the compass breathe it gives the compass its specific sonicete uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco the disadvantage of this mm, count, this method is maybe that if we have not yet assimilated this compass very well physically, we can get lost. Uh, it can be a bit confusing, especially when it's very slow. Okay, and now that we are here, let's see other crazy options. This one is for Rhythm Geeks, okay? You can skip it or you can just watch it for fun, for curiosity. I'll keep it short, I promise. If you really, really want to consider five beats, you can, but brace yourself. You need three short beats, like one portion of time, and two long beats, 1.5 portion of time, okay? It exists. It's crazy, but it exists. It's called a variable taxes compass in sesquialteral relation. A variable taxes compass in sesquialteral relation. Okay, one more way of counting, okay, and it's the last one, I swear. We can count it in six, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, you know, I think it's a very interesting way, actually, because it's very easy to write in musical notation. It's very easy to set up our uh, software, like for recording in a 6-4 bar. And I also think it gives a very, very nice feeling, a very interesting sonicete. This is what we did for our cigarilla with plan F called Cinco. You can go, I'll put the link in the description and listen to it. It's kind of investigating this compass and the different ways we can we can play it we can understand it and and, and just let me know what you think about this so if you ask me which one is the best way i think it just depends uh, i don't think there are good ways and bad ways the 12 bits count can be better to understand practice analyze but the five accent count can be better just to feel it and to assimilate it musically without thinking so much, without counting so much. Anyway, we don't need to stick with one method, one way of counting. Actually, I think it's good to go experiment and investigate with all these methods because all of them will give you different lightings and this is very, very good. And one more important thing, I mean, I'll repeat this many times, but all this, the count, the number, the Lego, the clocks, this is not music, these are tools, okay? But we need to make music with this. And nobody really cares about how do you count. If your music is good, if your compass is good, everything is perfect. And that's it. I find this fascinating that there can be so many different ways to explain just one thing. This is reality, right? It's not just one flat, one dimension thing. It's just 
multiple all the time. Nothing, nobody is just one thing. So just choose the way you prefer, the way you feel comfortable with, but also go and check the other way. I think it can only be good for you. Bueno, pues vámonos, ¿no? Thank you for watching. I hope it could help. If you liked it, give it a like, share it with your flamenco friends and subscribe to the channel. You can also go and check the website flamencomag.com. There are many classes and courses and things are coming there. Don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it yours. Thank you.